The Tez 8 is the only field serviceable vacuum pump in the industry. The KTT881R kit replaces all internal O-rings, seals, and springs, among other internal parts. Caution, this is an advanced repair. We suggest you watch the video in its entirety before attempting the repair. Pause the video when needed and do not skip any steps. An improper repair may damage the Tez 8. If you do not wish to perform this repair yourself, contact Appion about our professional repair services. Here is a list of recommended and necessary tools for a successful repair. Begin the repair by placing shop towels down for easy cleanup. Next, remove the oil canister, input stack, and debris tube. Don't forget to remove the debris screen as well. Now it's time to remove the four case screws at the top and bottom of the machine. Pry the case halves apart using a flathead screwdriver. Lightly strike the handle to finish taking off the first side panel. Remove both motor support brackets. Remove the fan shroud, but do not disconnect the wiring. Next, remove the small cover behind the input stack and set aside. Finish removing the case. You will need to use a motor support bracket to stabilize the machine during the repair. Using a 4mm ball end hex wrench, completely remove the far exhaust chamber screw. Loosen the screw under the exhaust chamber, but do not fully remove it. Detach the exhaust chamber assembly. Remove the four bolts that hold the oil gear pump assembly onto the front plate. Next, remove the oil gear pump assembly and set aside. Be sure to remove the small pin that sits inside the motor shaft and set it aside. Remove the O-ring. Remove the pump assembly bolts. Loosen the capacitor clamp screw and slide the capacitor out. Remove the ground wire screw and remove the wires from the heat sink. Lightly strike the front plate with a soft object to break it free. Next, remove and discard the front plate O-rings. Remove the two bolts and the input filter screen housing from the front plate input connector. Remove the O-ring from the input. Remove the bolt and front plate input connector. Remove both O-rings from the input connector. Next, remove the first stage rotor. Remove the first dowel pin from the motor shaft. Remove the cylinder assembly. Now remove the second stage rotor. Remove the second dowel pin from the motor shaft. Remove and discard the end plate O-rings. 
Remove the locating dowel pin and set it aside. Some older model machines do not have locating pins. This is normal. With an 8mm wrench, remove the nuts that hold the end plate to the motor. Remove the end plate from the motor. Next, fully disassemble the cylinder assembly, starting with the valve chamber. Remove the valves from the cylinder. Then remove the cylinder from the heatsink. Remove the O-ring from the valve chamber. Then remove the springs and dowel pins from the valve chamber. Using an adjustable wrench or a 25 millimeter wrench, remove the exhaust fitting from the valve chamber. Remove the O-ring from the valve chamber. Remove both O-rings from the exhaust fitting. Disassembly is now complete. The process continues with cleaning and inspection, followed by reassembly. Use a scoring pad to remove rust and caked on buildup from the outside of the cylinder. Lightly score the motor shaft to remove any buildup that may cause rotor interference. Remove any buildup or corrosion on the end plates. Wipe down the rotors and inspect all surfaces for nicks that could cause binding. Repeat this on both rotors. If any significant damage is found, replace the rotor. Check all of the sealing surfaces of the cylinder for any wear. If any damage or deep gouges are found, the cylinder must be replaced. Check the rear end plate and motor mount for play. If play is observed, remove the four bolts. Apply green thread locker to each bolt, then tighten until snug. Remove the shaft seals from both end plates and replace with the new seals. Use the top of a capped TESM cartridge as a press to install the new seal. Make sure you apply even, firm pressure on the seal. Repeat this for the front plate. Clean the shaft of any debris before mounting the rear end plate. Clean the motor case of any buildup. Lightly lubricate the seal and motor shaft before installing the end plate. Slide the end plate into position and ensure the brass plug is facing upwards. Loosely install the end plate nuts and washers. With the end plate installed but not fully tightened, begin to spin the fan by hand. Tighten the nuts in a crisscross pattern while spinning the fan. After all four nuts have been tightened, spin the fan by hand and ensure that the motor shaft will spin freely with no binding. Install a new O-ring between the valve chamber and exhaust fitting, then install the fitting. Tighten until snug with an adjustable wrench.
Install the new O-rings onto the exhaust fitting. Now install new dowel pins into the valve chamber. Be sure to press firmly to fully seat the dowel pin. Install the new springs over the dowel pins. Install a new O-ring into the groove in the valve chamber. Install the new valves into the correct position on the cylinder. Note that each valve has a curve. The valves must be installed as shown with the ends of the valves bending away from the cylinder. Orienting the valves on the cylinder is a guide for installation on the valve chamber. Orient the valve chamber with the corresponding holes on the cylinder. Then roll the pieces together, as to keep the valves in place. Hold the valve chamber and cylinder together and prepare to slide them back into the heatsink. Ensure that the short side of the cylinder is nearest to the ground screw on the heatsink. Continue to hold the valve chamber onto the cylinder until it can be bolted in place. Starting with the long screws, tighten the valve chamber to the heat sink. Repeat this for the other valve chamber bolts. Next, Use a pair of needle nose pliers to hold the nut into place while threading it onto the bolt. Once the nut has been threaded onto the bolt, switch to an open end wrench to fully tighten. The cylinder should stick out slightly from the edge of the heatsink on both sides. Install the new O-rings onto the input connector, then install the input connector onto the front plate. Apply a small drop of blue thread locker to the screw and tighten the screw into the input stack. Remove both O-rings from the debris tube side of the input stack. It will be necessary to cut the red O-ring to remove it. Install the new O-rings. The black O-ring must sit in the lower groove as shown. The red O-ring will sit in the upper groove as shown. Install a new O-ring into the input connector. Apply a drop of blue thread locker onto each bolt and attach the input connector to the input stack. Reinstall the locating dowel pin into the rear end plate. Use a few drops of clean vacuum pump oil to lubricate the O-ring grooves. Install the new O-rings into the rear end plate. Use a small amount of vacuum grease to help hold the pin onto the motor shaft. Dielectric grease can be used in place of high vacuum grease. The rotor must be installed so that the vane grooves are in a Z shape. The alignment of the rotors is important. Slide the second stage rotor over the pin on the motor shaft, ensuring that the pin does not fall out. Double check for the correct orientation of the rotor and install the second stage vanes. Ensure the vanes and rotor are installed as shown. Install the cylinder assembly. If the machine has a locating pin, 
ensure it is in place during this step and that it becomes fully seated. Using another dab of vacuum grease, place the second pin onto the motor shaft. Again, check the orientation of the rotor and ensure it forms a Z. Carefully align the pin and the groove on the rotor and slide the rotor onto the motor shaft. This step may take several attempts. Verify that the rotor is successfully installed. If installed correctly, the fan will spin as you move the rotor. Install the first stage vanes. Ensure the vanes are installed as shown with the angled edges facing inwards. Install the locating pin into the front plate. Use a few drops of clean vacuum pump oil to lubricate the O-ring grooves. Install the new O-rings into the front plate. Install the front plate. If the machine has a locating pin, ensure it becomes fully seated. Place a drop of blue thread locker on each of the pump assembly bolts. Install the pump assembly bolts in a crisscross pattern. Tighten the bolts in a crisscross pattern while rotating the fan by hand. Fully tighten to 40 inch-pounds using a torque wrench. Reinstall the ground wiring. Take note of the orientation of the lock washer. Orient the connector towards the motor to avoid pinching the wires during reassembly. Reinstall the capacitor and tighten the strap bolt to secure. Ensure the oil pump gears spin freely with no binding. Replace the oil pump O-ring with a new one. Reassemble the oil pump halves, making sure the locating pins are still in place. Use a few drops of clean vacuum pump oil to lubricate the O-ring groove and install the new O-ring. Take note of the orientation of the slot inside the motor shaft. Rotate the fan by hand to put it in a position where the oil pump can be aligned. Move the oil pump shaft into the same orientation and install the pin. Install the oil pump onto the front plate with the pin resting in the slot. Install the screws into the oil pump. Rotate the fan by hand while tightening the oil pump screws in an alternating pattern. Be sure that the fan spins freely and no binding is occurring after tightening the oil pump assembly. Ensure the washers will be on the outside of the exhaust chamber tab during installation. Align the exhaust chamber so the grooved slot fits over the bolt at the front of the machine. Seat the exhaust chamber onto the fitting. Firmly press down on the top until it is fully seated. Verify that the plastic tab is flush with the pump assembly. Install and secure the screw with the lock washer facing the plastic. Using a ball end 4mm hex wrench, Tighten the exhaust chamber screws until snug.
Next, use a pick to extract the old worn cap seals and replace with new. Note the special orientation of the quarter inch cap gasket. Ensure the indentation in the gasket faces out. Remove the O-rings from the input tree and replace with new. Wipe down any excess oil on the pump assembly before reassembling the case. Begin case reassembly by placing the pump assembly in the case half with the oil cartridge cut out. Reinstall the fan shroud, taking care to align the tabs between the two pieces and ensure the wiring is not pinched. Note the orientation of the motor in the case. Align the tabs on the motor support bracket to the corresponding case tabs. Insert the motor support brackets. It may be necessary to bend and strike the brackets and case to fully seat them. Check the oil supply tube. Ensure that it is not pinched against the case. If the oil supply tube is at risk of being pinched, move it out of the way with your hand. Install the faceplate as shown. Make sure to align the tabs in the groove in the case half. Look through the faceplate vents to ensure the oil tube is not pinched. Install the small plastic cover behind the input stack. Install the other case half. Ensure that the tabs and grooves are aligned between all pieces. It may be necessary to lightly strike the case in several places to achieve proper alignment. Tighten all four case screws. Check the debris screen before installation. Clean as necessary. Thoroughly clean the debris tube of any residue. Apply a thin film of vacuum grease to the sealing surface of the debris tube. Next, install it onto the input stack, ensuring it is fully seated and the spring is in place. Apply a thin film of vacuum grease to both O-rings on the input tree. Install the input tree onto the input stack and tighten the lock ring. Align the oil cartridge support as shown. Push the support towards the machine and pull it back down to lock it into place. An audible snap will help confirm that it is fully seated. Install either the shipping tube shown here or a Tesum oil cartridge. After successfully recasing the machine, it will be necessary to test it to confirm performance. The pump should pull down to 50 microns. It is normal to see dark oil after a rebuild as this is a byproduct of handling during reassembly. After clean oil is flushed through the machine, the oil should return to clean. A successful repair will make your Tez 8 perform like new. If you have any questions on how to execute your repair, please contact Appian directly.